What's up guys, back again for another book review. Today's book, it's, it's, it's orange. The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Yeah, I don't like to swear too much. I don't really say the F word or anything. So um, yeah, so really amazing book. This one is pretty simple. You know, I'm sure you can see by the title. <laughs> this one's by Mark Manson, A Counterintuitive Approach to Living a Good Life. These people give a fuck about this book. Ryan Holiday, Derek Sivers, Matt Kepnes, Steve Cam. In this generation defining self-help guide, a superstar blogger shows us that the key to being happier is to stop trying to be positive all the time and instead to become better at handling adversity. For decades, we've been told that positive thinking is the key to a happy, rich life, but those days are over. F positivity, Mark Manson says. Let's be honest, sometimes things are effed up and we have to live with it. For the past few years, Manson, via his widely popular blog, has been working on correcting our delusional expectations for ourselves and for the world. He now brings his hard-fought wisdom to this groundbreaking book. Manson makes the argument backed up by both academic research and well-time poop jokes that improving our lives hinges not on our ability to turn lemons into lemonade, but on learning to better stomach lemons. Human beings are flawed and limited, as he writes. Not everybody can be extraordinary. There are winners and losers in society. And some of it is not fair or your fault. Manson advises us to get to know our limitations and accept them. Once we embrace our fears, oh wait, this he says is a real source of empowerment. Once we embrace our fears, faults, and uncertainties, once we stop running from and avoiding and start confronting painful truths, we can begin to find the courage and confidence we desperately seek. In life, we have a limited amount of Fs to give so you must choose your Fs wisely. Manson brings a much needed grab you by the shoulders moment of real talk, filled with entertaining stories and profane, ruthless humor. This manifesto is a refreshing slap in the face for all of, for all of us so that we can start to lead more uh, contented, grounded lives. Yeah, this is what he, uh, this is what the author looks like. It's pretty, pretty dope, so. So yeah, I'll just go through some of the chapters. Chapter one, don't try. Uh, happiness is a problem. You are not special. The value of suffering. You are always choosing. You're wrong about everything. Failure is the way forward. The importance of saying no. And then you die. <laughs> I know it's crazy, right? So as always, um, get the flap in the way. Pick a random spot in the book. Okay, how to build trust. My wife is one of those women who spend a lot of time in front of the mirror. She loves to look amazing and I love for her to look amazing too, obviously. Nights before we go out, she comes out of the bathroom after an hour long makeup, hair, clothes, whatever women do in their session and asks me how she looks. She's usually gorgeous. Every once in a while though, she looks bad. Maybe she tried to do something new with her hair or decided to wear a pair of boots that some flamboyant fashion designer from Milan thought were uh, Aventurgrard, I very happy to pronounce that. <laughs> Whatever the reason, it just doesn't work. When I tell her this, she usually gets pissed off as she marches back into the closet or the bathroom to redo everything and make, and make us 30 minutes late. She spouts a bunch of her four letter words and sometimes even slings a few of them in my direction. Men stereotypically lie in this situation to make their girlfriends slash wives happy. But I don't, why? Because honestly, in my relationship is more important to me than feeling good all the time. The last person I should ever have to sense, the last person I should ever have to censor myself with is the woman I love. That's so damn true. Fortunately, I'm married to a woman who agrees and is willing to hear my uncensored thoughts. She calls me out on my bullshit too, of course, which is one of the most important traits she offers me as a partner. Sure, my ego gets bruised sometimes, and I bitch and complain and try to argue, but a few hours later, I come sulking back and admit that she was right. And holy crap, she makes me a better person even though I hate hearing it at the time. When our highest priority is to always make ourselves feel good or to always make our partner feel good, then nobody ends up feeling good. And our relationship falls apart because without, and our relationship falls apart without 
our even knowing it. Without conflict, there can be no trust. Conflict exists to show us who there is for us unconditionally and who there is just for the benefits. No one trusts a yes man. If Disappointment Panda were here, he'd tell you that the pain in our relationship is necessary to cement our trust in each other and produce greater intimacy. So, yeah, this book, it's, uh, it's a short one, but it gets, it gets deep to the point, really hits the ego, and of course, it's, it's colorful, right? So, highly recommend it, starting out. It's a really great read, and uh, yeah, especially if, if you're somebody that's a little sensitive and... You know, you need a little bit of, of roughing up in terms of a book. This is definitely the one. And if you're somebody that's blunt and, you know, you like to get to the point, yeah, highly recommend getting this.